Hi all, welcome to this video. Uh, we're just going to take a quick look at the commonly how belief that electricity takes the path of least resistance. Uh, this is a really commonly held uh, belief and often causes confusion with uh, different people expecting electricity to behave in ways that it doesn't really uh, behave in. So we'll just start with an example. and. So we're all familiar with uh, electricity of overhead lines and I'm just going to paint a scenario here of we have a, a tree um, that comes into contact with a, a power line, we have a, a eventual fire and it's, believe me, it's, it's pretty impressive when this happens. Um, and, and, you know, to be honest, this is a, a very uh, um, conceivable uh, event and people would look at that and say, wow, that tree is carrying a a lot of current, so all, and all the electricity takes the path, you know, the shortest path to ground, the path of least resistance, and it'll be passing through that uh, that tree. But but does all the electricity go down through that tree? Well, and uh, how is an you know how is how is the electricity going to know, you know, which path is the 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 uh, path of uh, of least resistance? How does how does that work? Why don't we just look at uh, take an opportunity to look at a bigger system? Here we have a uh, uh, an electrical grid. We have a generation uh, on the uh, left there. We have some cities out here on the right, and we have a um, a, a distribution system taking power to, from this generator to these um, to these cities. Now, if we imagine these are the really big transmission lines, and we would know that off these there'll be sub substations and a whole bunch of other smaller electricity lines going out to rural areas, a whole bunch of other loads being served off these um, uh, these power lines, more s small factories, things like that. So think of just a, a really you know quite big complicated system. If we then move on to, if we now simplify a system and consider just the generator and the city, as well as going back to our original scenario, our little transmission line coming down or distribution line coming down to feed it in our house, which is then in contact with a tree and we have the resultant fire. So what happens there, right? So when that tree touches that line, do we really, does all the, the thousands of people in that city lose power? Um, their lights go out as soon as we have a, a, a tree out on a rural property touching a power line and uh, causing a fire. Where, where is that power always all, all going to go down um, that that one tree? Well, that's you know if we think about that really bigger system that that much much bigger system that we were looking at before. If we think of how many trees or how many other faults could occur, people crashing and cars crash coming into contact with lines, uh, general um, accidents, flashovers uh, on the distribution lines. Think of how many faults that could occur. Yet, for the most part, throughout the year, our lights remain on. The, the lights in the city remain on. The lights in the house remain, remain can remain on even though the, you know things are, are, are faults are happening out on the uh, distribution system as a whole so how taken into that that original lay theory that electricity always takes the shortest path or the path of least resistance uh, well then obviously their electricity is still continuing to flow to other places as well as going through the fault that we described now going back to that original uh, discussion of uh, that being uh, our distribution system being much, much more complicated. Well, here is an example of that. This is a map of the, the western seaboard of the United States. The United States is comprised of about four large uh, grids uh, or tied in, uh, intertied with DC buses, but we won't go into that. So all of these uh, red lines that you can see here are, um, the, the, and essentially all of these colored lines are uh, distribution systems. And you can see down here in the bottom left that there is a key there for the, the sizes. So those are the major transmission lines. And so we have 
coming off these lines there's going to be multiple 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 distribu smaller distribution lines you know all of those small rural loads you, know, you can think of how many people that there are in the western united states and power has to get down to every single one of those um those properties so and the other, going back to that original example of the generators, all of these pink, all of these pink um, dots uh, around here, and the black ones, those are our generation stations. So once again, quite a big, complicated system. So we, going back to the example of the tree, obviously, if we had a tree strike somewhere in the United States, which there's a lot of power lines, there's a lot of chance for something to happen power is not going to go out everywhere. The, all the electricity is not going to take the shortest path. Uh, there will certainly be a lot of current flowing into that fault, down through that tree, setting it on fire, but not all the electricity is going to be going through that fault. So that really illustrates that maybe that lay theory is, is not, that original theory is, is not quite correct. Might be something more to it. Um, we'll just go back to an even simpler example. In our house, we're all familiar with uh, clicking a switch and uh, getting a light to turn on. Now, that's all straightforward, but uh, so so what we have here is a, a circuit here we, we, where the electricity passes through the switch, then through the lamp, and then um, uh, goes back out through the, the, the neutral uh, return wire. Now, that's a, uh, fairly straightforward, but going back to the original lay theory that electricity always takes the shortest path here it's simple right we've only got one one switch one path for electricity but what if there's another path right well how how does this lay theory work if we can run you know the electricity through one light then then why does the electricity then also flow through this light won't the electricity only go through the the path of least resistance let's say this is the the one that has a shorter run of wire or or maybe the lamp has a has a lower resistance um, that uh, wouldn't the electricity all go through there so maybe our original lay theory is essentially incorrect so our lay, going back to our, our lay theory that electricity takes the path of least resistance well demonstrably that is not correct so here is the proposed more complete theory and it is the most electricity will flow down the path of least resistance the most electricity will flow down that tree flow into that fault and set it on fire however electricity will continue to flow down all other paths available to it so this is why the lights will remain on the city even though the distribution line in the countryside is you know uh, uh, setting it on uh, uh, trees on fire and having circuit breakers uh, tripped and things like that this is why you can run two lights you know two three lights you know in parallel in your in your house and have multiple switches on multiple circuits and not take all the current through down the the light that happens to have the lowest resistance so hopefully this has been a useful um, exercise and useful sort of demonstration of why that that often stated theory that electricity takes past the least resistance is well it's not really the full truth and thanks for your time